Welcome back once again to the Ubuntu 19.10 release cycle madness. And uh, this video is following up on the first impressions video that I did of the beta a few weeks ago of the Ubuntu Mate 19.10 Eowyn Ehrman. I think I'm getting better at pronouncing that the more I say it, I don't really know. Uh, okay, so there is a little bit to talk about in this release and I'm gonna try and keep this video a bit shorter because so much of what is new to this release I did discuss in the beta first impressions video. Long story short, if you can't be watching, uh, if you can't be bothered watching to the end, Ubuntu Mate is one of the most uh, lightweight, functional and well-polished uh, desktop environments and, uh, and, and Linux distribution as a whole that puts the needs of its community, the needs of its users right at the forefront of its project. And for that, you should definitely go and check it out. If you want the latest and greatest that hardware support has to offer, then definitely go and download the 19.10 release. Uh, if you can't be bothered or if uh, you want more support and more stability out of your distribution, then definitely go and check out the Ubuntu 18.04 uh, distribution of Mate because so many of the features still apply um, even though there are, uh, there are a, a myriad of fixes and tweaks that are unique to the 19.10 release cycle. I'm going to try and break down what those are and uh, and my closing thoughts on this one because I really freaking love this project. So get ready for a little bit of gushiness and hopefully not too much uh, useless fluff as is usually the case in most of my videos. Gonna start with the welcome screen because there are some features here that I did not cover in the uh, in the beta first impressions. There is just so much to love in what the team at, uh, at Ubuntu Mate, the, what they put into this welcome screen because not everyone knows where to go digging for these things. And, uh, and true story, I've installed Ubuntu Mate on a friend's uh, old MacBook of all things. It's like one of those white plastic MacBooks from like 2011. Anyway, uh, it's it runs it and it runs it okay. It's, it's got two gig of RAM, it's a little bit stodgy, but still it runs it. And, uh, and it's one of the most familiar interfaces because with a tool like Mate Tweak that I've talked about many times before, jump in here, change the panel layout to whatever is familiar to you, and chances are you'll probably love it. Okay, so when it, when it comes time to talk about what is unique with this welcome screen, as opposed to some of the other ones that we've seen from Budgie, Manjaro, and the like, um, there's, you know, there's all of the, all the standard things here, like updates and drivers. Uh, it also gives you some one-click install options for things like network sharing, for configuring a firewall out of the box, configuring any extra users you might want, and backups, which are really handy uh, on, the, on the first run. When it comes to features, again, it kind of unpacks what makes the Ubuntu Mate distribution unique as opposed to all the other ones. And really it covers a lot of the same bases that the Ubuntu Budgie welcome screen does as well. They also have the same browser selection tool that you can use to install. They don't give as much information as the Ubuntu Budgie welcome screen does in that it doesn't really tell you which ones would be snap and which ones would be native from the repositories, but that is what it is. And also they give you a quick graphical tool to be able to lay out uh, a visual representation of the uh, panel layouts. So if you're a fan of, of the Unity desktop, you can go and do that. Uh, for me personally on mine, I think I have the Cupertino layout because I'm a sucker for a global menu and I love the heads up display and I'm not too uh, annoyed by a dock either. The Software Boutique is uh, something that I've raved about before. Really appreciate the way that they curate software for um, new users and uh, and honestly watching, uh, watching my friend of mine going through the laptop and uh, and seeing what free software was available to them and the explanations that each of these uh, little um, items have given, it really helps flesh out the ecosystem of what is this new system and new world of software that's available to you. The fact that they also include one-click solutions to install the, the, the bigger GNOME software center and the Synaptic Package Manager, also really helpful. One-click fixes I'm a big fan of. So if you uh, corrupt your sources list or if you have broken packages, again, the welcome screen is just a really good place to be able to find solutions to those things. Okay, now it's no secret that this particular release cycle has been called by the team as a bit of a paper cut release in that it is more about trying to fix little things that were bothering the team as opposed to putting in amazing new features. So. Again, referring to so many of these uh, release notes, one of the most detailed release notes that you can find on the Ubuntu release cycle for 19.10, uh, there is so much there. And honestly, I don't have time to go through it all. Go watch the beta video and that will unpack some of it. 
Useful keyboard shortcuts have been changed. Uh, window managers have been streamlined. The app, uh, the app indicator panel up here in the top right has been tweaked. So now it looks a lot more visually consistent and I appreciate that. The only thing that I personally have changed on this particular desktop is the wallpaper and the default font. Uh, I've just changed it from the Ubuntu font to Noto Sans. No particular reason, I just did. They've done a few tweaks to try and shrink the ISO down because it is a bulkier ISO than what it used to be. And also you do have the option, of course, as is standard with the Ubuntu 19.10 release cycle to install the ZFS file system, which is pretty awesome in and of its own right. I'm gonna get to that in my part two review of the bog standard Ubuntu release. Uh, and you have the latest kernel you have uh, the GNOME 3.34.1 software stack. And I believe there are always excellent power management uh, things to be found in latest uh, kernel and latest hardware drivers. Uh, all that is to say that if you have a relatively recent NVIDIA graphics card, you will get the ISO delivered to you out of the, um, you will get the drivers delivered to you on the ISO out of the box. And you don't need to connect to the internet to install that, which is great. And that should lead to a more compatible and a more performant desktop out of the box. So folks, you can see that on, when it just comes to sheer numbers, kernel 5.3, we've got the Marco uh, window manager as the default. Out of the box, we're only using about 700 meg of memory out of the four gig that I've given it. So I've actually limited the amount of RAM that I would usually give a distribution out of the box. And if we check out HTOP, you can see that, yeah, it kind of fluctuates between six and 700 meg there. Uh, and I have had stuff running as well. So it's not entirely fair. I've had Firefox open and a few other things. But uh, again, if you've got older hardware, it's really gonna benefit from running Ubuntu Mate. Okay, so uh, basically my conclusion with the Ubuntu Mate 19.10 release cycle is this. If you have up-to-date modern hardware and you wanna be able to take full advantage of that, including NVIDIA uh, graphics cards, uh, maybe more effective power management on the laptop side of things, then go and get the 19.10 release. Uh, because the because the fixes that the team, uh, that the Mate team have done for the Mate desktop, which is I believe at version 1.22, I think, uh, the fixes that they provide for this uh, release will apply most directly to you. Things like high pixel density display, uh, things like notification managers, all the stuff that I talked about in the beta, that's probably gonna to apply to you. Uh, if you have an older machine, maybe you don't have the latest Ryzen CPUs or anything like that, and you just want to take advantage of uh, the stable base of Ubuntu's long-term support release, and you want to plunk a desktop environment that is fully functional, uh, literally does not hold back from anything. You can customize to the nth degree and, uh, and still be able to run on older hardware, then go and get the 18.04.3, I think we're up to. And, uh, and you will benefit from most of the things that the Mate desktop has to offer. That's kind of where I land. So that means uh, for me, this is probably my favorite out of all of the Ubuntu 19.10 uh, releases. And it is the one that is on my native hardware right now. Uh, in fact, I could probably just drop that back and you can kind of see that's what I'm running in the background here. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff going up here on the panel and uh, window switches, global menus, love it, love it, love it. So there are some comments that I could make about the changes that Ubuntu has made in the 19.10 release cycle. But if you wanna look into that, go and check out part one of the Ubuntu 19.10 review. And, uh, and that talks about some of the stuff that is more general to the Ubuntu release family as a whole instead of Ubuntu Mate. For me, what it boils down to is if you wanna be reminded again of how functional and just fast Linux can be on the desktop, uh, Ubuntu Mate is just one of the ones that you need to check out. Um, yes, it isn't as modern and, and polished in that sense compared to something like Ubuntu Budgie, um, which I've got a review um, out or coming very soon about that. But the thing is that it's really hard to argue with just how performant this feels. So when you're like opening up, I don't know, a bunch of applications here, um, honestly, the, the, you're never left waiting around. Bear in mind, I'm running this inside a virtual machine. The amount of time that you actually are left hanging is barely ever. And yet the sheer amount of functionality that you get out of the box with a lot of the GNOME 2 series applications, which have since become the Mate applications, is just really hard to argue with. Like check out the context menus in the file browser. Check out what you can add to the panel up the top. I mean, 
there is so much flexibility here and you don't sacrifice any performance for it. I really dig that. Now, if you are into fancy effects and you want to have a nice smooth uh, animated window manager, then go and check out the commands that they give in the release notes to add the Compiz window manager back into the mix. By default, they use Marco and that's just a stability and streamlining choice. For me, it's perfectly decent. It does what I want it to do. I think I've about covered my opinions on this one. Hopefully it wasn't too biased and, and, and gushy for you. Anyway, let me know what you think down below. Um, what would be the most ideal uh, base that you would want to run the Mate desktop on? For me, it used to be a toss up between Linux Mint and Ubuntu Mate. In the last two years, uh, Ubuntu Mate has really pulled ahead and, uh, and I love what those guys are doing. Coming up very soon, I'll be having a conversation with Martin Wimpress, who's one of the uh, one of the key community faces for Ubuntu Mate and Snap Packages and other things. So let me know what questions you would like uh, me to approach uh, in our conversation with uh, with Martin in the coming days, and uh, we'll try and cover that as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.